long ago in a deserted lonely custom house in Salem in Massachusetts in America there worked a surveyor he had very little work because ships came rarely to this custom house and he tells us a mysterious story a hell fired story of sin in the 17th century in boston near salem there lived some puritans they were very strict religious people they were against the secret passions of the human mind and the human body one day a 14 year old girl comes to this small village in boston and there she got pregnant this girl was already the husband of another man in london england and amsterdam they had lived together and she had come alone to boston and she now fell in love with someone and has got a child this is the 14 year old Hester Prin her name rhymes with sin she has a 3 month old baby now and she is brought in front of the boston people and she is publicly questioned who is the father of your baby reverend arthur dimsdale a respected clergyman is questioning her but hester does not reveal the name of her partner in crime she does not reveal the name of the father of her little girl pearl while she is being tried in public there is a misshapen man standing at the edge of the crowd and hester recognizes him as her husband chillingworth he was believed to be lost at sea in a shipwreck now he has come back to find out who is hester's partner and he wants to punish hester and her sinful partner he is in disguise as a physician a leech and he is ready to suck the blood of hester and her sinful partner hester is condemned to live in the outskirts of the city of the village of boston near the forest the forest is the symbol of nature of wild passions of moral wilderness and hester lives there with her daughter pearl her daughter grows up to be wild and disobedient the people of boston want to take the daughter away and put her in some good household but arthur dimsdale helps hester to keep her daughter 3 years pass pearl is a little girl she is dressed in red and her mother hester has to wear a scarlet letter a which is a sign of adultery but she has neatly embroidered it it looks like a beautiful ornament on her hester is a human being even if the people of puritan boston thrust upon her force upon her artificial rules of morality she has passions she is a human being she is a woman and she had a child when hester lives there we understand that she is not just a sinful adulteress she is living a wonderful life of beauty and helpfulness she travels in the village helps anybody who is in need 
and she is a very able embroiderer. The women of Boston are all not so perfect. There is Mistress Hibbins who goes into the forest and she worships the black man. The black man represents evil. Mistress Hibbins is the sister of Governor Bellingham. She is a powerful woman but she worships evil. She wants Hester to join her but Hester doesn't do that. Hester is like an angel. Governor Winthrop is in his deathbed and Hester is taking care of him. At that time, Arthur Dimsdale has been showing signs of illness. He is always putting his hand on his chest. He seems to be in pain. Chillingworth, Hester's husband, is also living there. Like a leech, he notices Dimsdale's discomfort. He moves in with this Dimsdale and he is morally torturing the minister, sucking his blood metaphorically. Because Dimsdale is probably Hester's partner and Chillingworth is vindictive. That day, Governor Winthrop dies. You can see the scaffold in the moonlight. On the platform, Dimsdale is standing and he is laughing like a madman. Hester and Pearl pass by and he asks them to come up to the scaffold. And Hester, Pearl and Dimsdale for the first time stand there on the scaffold like a family. Dimsdale is the father of Pearl. We did not know that. Now we know. And when they stand there, a meteor passes through the sky in the shape of a gigantic A. The next day, people of Boston say, General Winthrop is an angel. A is for angel. That is why God has sent us this sign. But we know, you and I know, this A for angel stands for Hester. Hester is not a sinful adulteress. She is an angel. She's a human being. Human passions are not bad. This is what Nathaniel Hawthorne shows in this world famous novel, The Scarlet Letter. Seven years pass and there is an election sermon for which Dimsdale is making preparations. The day of the election sermon comes. He delivers that lecture in such a heart-rending manner. Everybody is torn apart by that sermon, the election sermon. After that, Dimsdale walks up to the scaffold. He is in great pain, apparently. Is it physical or metaphorical? He tears his clergyman's robes and reveals before the people a scarlet letter A on his chest with a red hot iron. He had been brandishing a letter A every day. It had become rotten. It, was be it had become septic. It was eating away his heart. He revealed to the world that he is Hester's partner in crime, in sin. He, the clergyman who could not reveal his sinfulness. He ultimately showed the world that he was suffering for it and he swooned and died on the scaffold. Hester is no longer an adulteress. Just before this, she had met Dimsdale in the forest. She had told Dimsdale, let us go live somewhere else or let us live in the forest. Let us go to Europe. Let us live there as a family. 
and she had even booked tickets on the ship and Chillingworth who knew about their plan had bought tickets on the same ship. Chillingworth is defeated. Dimsdale boldly revealed his sinfulness to the world and died. Hester cannot die like that. She has already suffered. She goes away with Pearl to Europe where Pearl gets education. Pearl never returns but Hester returns to Boston. This is where she belongs and she never takes off her scarlet letter A from her chest. She lives and dies an adulteress but we know she was an angel. This story is told to us by the unnamed narrator who is a surveyor at Salem Custom House. What is sin? What is suffering? Is human passion sinful? Salem is the place where women were put on trial and killed as witches. Hester is branded as an adulteress and a witch. She becomes an outsider. She is like a monster to the Salem people, to the Boston people, to the hypocrites, the hypocritical Puritans of Boston. Nathaniel Hawthorne is criticizing this rigid Puritanism in this famous novel, The Scarlet Letter. <laughs>